and the pistol is, is your Alex, is your final stopping out, point, is, is your final stopping speak, point uh, something speak, aesthetic? Uh, yeah, but you're speak. filibustering, Alex. Well, one hour later. Even with a PhD in philosophy, all he wanted to say is, well, I just believe that, you know, gods are made up. That's the, that's the best that a PhD could do. If that's the best that a PhD in philosophy can do, what hope is it for the, the run-of-the-mill atheists? You know, part of your worldview, part of your conception of what the word worldview means is probably different from mine. So, I mean, for you, it just means having a single organizing kind of metaphysical principle, um, whereas I think there are other types of worldview that, that are just different from that. No, you just don't do you, recognize them at all. Do you, do you accept the, a, the world where there is an absolute um, non-dependent creator who brings to pass all things that begin? Do you accept that view? Um, well, I mean, I already said I don't think that that thing exists. I mean, it's just a sort of weird way of asking okay. the same right. question. So then, so, then, so then you're operating from a worldview that is not that. So therefore, the view that there is a creator-creator distinction would be false in your view. No, remember I just said I, I can recognize the distinction between an earthling and a Martian. That's a category error. That We're not talking – yeah but, yeah, but Martians are, are not the ultimacy of reality. God, by definition, would be ultimate. Yeah, now, but his being so, ultimate doesn't mean that, that what I just said then isn't still applicable. It's a, it's like, a, cat it's a category error. Even – no, they may be different categories, but that just because they're different categories doesn't mean that what I said doesn't apply to them, right? You so, can so Ale the Alex, between is belief is belief in God as creator a worldview, Alex? On your definition of worldview, I guess so. Right. Do you do you hold do you have that worldview, Alex? I don't know. As I said, right. so, so I then you that God exists. So then you so then good. Then therefore, whenever you speak, okay. The dependency statements that you speak are in virtue of not God, a not God worldview. It's really not too. It's not that complicated, right? It's not necessarily so. A com so, complicated. so how it's did you? So how did how did you it's determine? How did you? Right. How did you determine that there's no God, Alex? Well, by determined, you mean what's my deductive argument? Right. That's what you mean. I want any line of reasoning you're willing to give me of how, you, because your position is the not God position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All, so all, look, every, look, yeah, okay. But when I say something to you, you're going to tell me, does it follow logically from that, that God doesn't exist? And I'm going to say no. And then you're going to just ask again what the reason is. And because I'm not offering you a deductive argument, so it doesn't like meet your criteria. But look, here's a way of looking at it. It seems to me, right, my attitude is like this, that... I observe um, all sorts of reasons, all sorts of religions which seem patently made up, right? You know, um, Mormonism or whatever, right? Like, uh, I don't know, Scientology, this type of stuff. Um, and they just seem obviously made up, right? I mean, like, I also think that's true of uh, Buddhism and Judaism and Islam. I think they're all products of human creativity. And I think, you know, just follows the pattern that Christianity is just... Why isn't, why isn't, why isn't your not God worldview made up? What's the foundation that you are reasoning from when you, when you give me facts? How do you have intelligibility for facts? What is it that ultimately exists that's going to provide a framework or an ultimate context so you can have intelligibility for facts? Since it's not God, what's going to be the ultimate framework, Alex? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just I mean you know I'm I'm obviously only. Uh, a, a mortal human, right? But I mean, I'm not sure I know what you're asking me, to be honest. So, I mean, so either you have a framework, framework. For, either you have you a mean. framework, either you have an ultimate framework for the meaningfulness and intelligibility of facts, or you don't have an ultimate framework. Which Yeah, but that's just, you're just saying either P or not P. I mean, okay, but I just don't know what the option is. Right. Do you have a framework for, for facts that you speak, Alex? Do they have an ultimate context? Or are the facts that you that you invoke are just in virtue of just stuff happens? Um, I, what's an ultimate framework? What's the difference between an ultimate framework and say uh, God, uh, God, 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 God is an ultimate framework. God is that right, which so is why? ultimate, absolute. Mean, so, 
Well, why? It's, God's the all conditioner by which by which we can have intelligibility for for facts. Okay, because facts so, are going so to be wait, wait, dependency. Wait, wait, wait. Pause, 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 pause. So, uh, an ultimate framework is just another way of saying God, right? That's it. That's what you're asking me is, do I believe? No, God? you you asked me to give an example, but since you since you your position is that God doesn't exist, I want to know what your ultimate framework is when you speak well, facts. What ground I facts? Maybe I have an ultimate framework, right? But I don't know what you're asking me. So maybe you can just. I'm spell trying out to find out what's your what 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 is the ultimate context that's going to provide meaning and intelligibility for the facts that, that are going to ground your facts. Well, is there anything other than God that could even be that thing? Because if it's just nothing counts as an ultimate framework apart from God, then I guess I don't. No, I want all the Christians in the room to notice the same pattern of behavior that we have with ordinary everyday atheists. We have the same pattern of evasiveness and double talk from somebody not, who has a PhD. You're being completely evasive, Alex. Well, I'm giving me you're giving me double talk. Mean, right? Otherwise I'll just be answering questions without really I have explained what, what, what I what I mean. Now, no, you the said, point is this wait, is wait, 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 wait. You, I said what is an ultimate context? Because look, it's not an everyday term, right? I know enough philosophy to know that it's not a regular term in philosophy, right? You're using it in a very special way. Right. That's like idiomatic why, to you. So why I'm does anything at means, all exist, Alex? Fair. Alex, in your view, why do, why do why do any facts at all exist, Alex? Why do any facts at all exist? I mean, the specific facts, I can explain why those specific facts exist, right? Why is it a fact that there's, you know, a rug on my floor? Well, because I put the rug on the floor. That's why that okay. fact exists. Okay, so let, let's make it simple. Let's say an apple on the counter, right? Right, so okay. a causal so, explanation of why the apples on the counter. I what, I, what, give what, what I want to know is why are there why are there particulars that ha, uh, that there are classes? Does the world around you provide the preconditions for uh, particulars to be members of a class? Okay, is there a uniformity of nature, Alex, that will provide for classness of particulars such as apples? I mean, particulars and classes like sets and elements of sets. Are, yeah, I think those things exist. I think sets exist. Yeah, okay, so so exist. in order to talk about apples and 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 rugs, okay, the world around us is going to have to have to exist in a certain way, namely a uniformity of nature. Without a uniformity of nature, could you have classes of things, Alex? I think you can have classes of things without uniformity of nature. Yes. Good. Explain to me how. Explain to me how you can have a, a class, a, a an actual particular can be a member of a class if nature doesn't operate in regular ways. Well, <laughs> I mean, the two things are completely independent of each other. Imagine there was nothing at all, right? Then there'd be this set that had nothing, no elements in it. See, you're right? evading my question, Alex. I'm not. That's a direct answer to your question. I'm, no, you asked no, me how no. the two things could be. Um, how you can have sets without how can you have a class of an apple if nature does not operate in some regular ways how can we yeah, have a okay, class so of the, appleness the, your uh, our conceptions are different right so for me a class is an abstract object right which exists independently of any of the particular things that instantiate it so even if there were no things there would still be the classes of things that those things might instantiate were they to exist, right? So it's straightforward. How would you? Places. How would you? How would you even? How would you even? How would you know that there are abstract objects, Alex? How would I? How do I know? How would I know if, yeah. if there weren't yeah. any? I'm still. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. How could you have an apple possessing the class of appleness if the, there wasn't a uniformity of nature? You, well, See, what you're, you're, you're trying to say is you. What you're trying to say is that there's a cla there, that there could be classness as an abstract object, uh, object without mm. the uniformity of nature. That's not my question. I'm saying if we're talking about an apple, okay, how does mm -hmm. that apple possess the class of appleness if there's no uniformity of nature? Well, I mean, a, how could a particular apple have a property of being an apple? I mean, that does. Yeah, a, a, a single thing instantiating a property. Yeah, that would have to have a uniformity of nature. The class itself doesn't okay. require uniformity okay. of nature. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so what's can the can you have can you have particulars that actually possess classes without a uniformity of nature, Alex? You can't have concrete particulars instantiating things like physical properties without the uniformity of nature. No. I guess you could have numbers having abstract properties. Yeah, Alex, you're but, you're just giving me double talk. 
I'm not giving you double talk. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. What I want to know is, can you can you have an apple possess the class the class of appleness without the uniformity of nature? Well, I mean, I'm trying to understand your question. It seems to me, right? Let you give me a few seconds to explain why I think this, right? An apple is a concrete particular. It's appleness, the properties it has, green, whatever, taste, blah, blah, blah. All of those things are uh, embedded in a causal nexus. And if there were no causal nexus, if there were no surrounding environment in which it was existing, I don't think it would make sense to say that it had any properties at all. Any concrete object can't have causally interactive properties unless there's an environment that it's interacting in. Right? So I don't think you could have an apple in a kind of sea of kind of white noise or something. I don't think that makes any sense. So I, I, I'm agreeing, I think, that you can't have those types of properties, the sorts of things apples have, you know, its shape, its taste, it's what it looks like, unless there was um, a uniformity of nature, your, your phrase, a causal nexus in which it subsists. So, I mean, does that, is that clear? If you think that's double talk, then... No, it's not you know. clear. Uh, you know, I ask this question every single day, day after day, months on end. To atheists, I want to know: Can you can the apple possess be a member uh, of a, of a class without there being the uniformity of nature for that apple? Simple question, Alex. Yeah, I feel like I just answered the the answer to that is: Can that, can an apple have a property without without a uniformity of nature? In a, in a world where the there's not a uniformity of nature, can, can can an apple possess the class the the class of appleness? Okay, so I mean, just for the sake of moving the conversation on, I mean, I say this, this, you want it to be a yes or no. So the answer is, I guess, no, right? If that makes you that's right. acceptable. So I mean, the intelligibility, cool. so the intelligibility, when you invoke classes of things, of concrete particulars, it requires the precondition of the uniformity of nature. Otherwise, you're not going to have intelligibility for the actual classness of concrete particulars. So does your world, does your world provide for the uniformity of nature, Alex? Does my world provide? I think that nature is uniform. Yeah, if that's what you're asking. And and do you do you do you have, can you uh, account for that? How, how is it that nature operates in a law like way? By what means do you justify that? What's well, what is it that is like ultimately identity. static? That pro- what is it that is ultimately static that will provide for that, Alex? Well, I don't know what you mean by provide for it. Like I think there are laws of nature, right? And I think I can obviously see uniformities. You, you can't. You can't see universals, Alex. Uniformities. I can see regular. I can see things happening. No, the same you can, way. no, you no, can. Sorry. No, you can. You could see consistencies, but that doesn't. That mm. that doesn't necessitate that this that this these are these are laws. Just like the chicken who no, gets. No, I didn't say it necessitated. Off. Okay, so yeah, I didn't so, say it necessitated. So, do you have a justification? Do you have a justification that your world? provides for the uniformity of nature? Well, I mean, you won't accept it as a justification, of course, right? But, I mean, I can see them around me. But you, you're no, going to say that's, that, be, that that's, logically... that begging the, that's begging the question. Well, no, I don't think it is. I don't think that it is. Sure, it absolutely is. Mm-hmm. Why is that then? Uh, because what you're, what you're saying is, is the whole conforms to the part of your experience. That's like the chicken... Reasoning the law of the farmer who feeds it every morning. And then on the first day of its 16th year, the farmer comes and cuts his head off. Oops. Okay, so look, think about it like this. If there were no laws of nature, would I be able to even form the thought that there might be laws of nature? Would that not be impossible? No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to form that thought. Right. Okay, so there you go. There's a transcendental argument for the uh, regularities of nature because I can form the thought. Right, and it would yeah. be impossible to do that but, unless there but were. You, but you see, but you see, these are these so occurrences. So yeah, but the uh, yeah, but your your thoughts are they spontaneous occurrences? Because you're presupposing when you talk about thoughts that there's a reasoning process. What I want to know from you is: is the world around you? Is it a world that where there's something that's static that provides for continuity and some level of actual uniformity, as opposed to the illusion of it? Maybe, well, maybe, I, I in your world, right, yeah. maybe in your right. world, the spontaneity that is occurring has produced the illusion that, that you have thought. But you're not actually having thought. 
What I want to know is the world that you live in, yeah. is it a, ch- is, is it, well, is, is, is your world governed by something that is static or is your, is the world around you just spontaneous chance occurrences? Which, which world do you live in, Alex? Well, <clears throat> okay. So you said a few, lots of different questions there. So look, um, I think I live in a world where there are regularities, right? And I think that if I lived in a world, if I was as radically deceived as you were saying, I might be then I would also be deceived as to whether you're even asking me these questions or whether those questions even make Yeah, but sense. I don't, but you see, right? you if see, deception you would are, be a process, wait, wait Alex. A minute, wait a minute, you interrupted me mid, midway through a sentence. So if you just let me get to the end of my sentence, you can say as much as you like. If I was wrong about your questions having any meaning, then they wouldn't have any meaning. I think they did, right? But if I was wrong about that, deceived as you say I might be, then you're not actually asking me any questions. There is no threat in any way. If you are asking me questions, if that's intelligible, then there must be regularities. So actually your questions, the very notion of skeptical questioning itself, would be impossible if there were no regularities of nature. Yeah, that's because I'm operating from the God world, Alex. Yeah, but you see, I'm not not a global skeptic, Alex. Okay, I'm not a global skeptic, Alex. Neither am I. Right? Good. Then Neither can you I. tell me what is it? What is the ultimate precondition that's going to provide for the intelligibility of the particulars that you say? What What is it going to be? Are you just going to appeal to uh, uh, brute facts, or is there or is there something that's ultimate that's going to uh, provide for intelligibility, Alex? Yeah, I just uh, see. The thing is, I don't know what "provide for intelligibility" means. Pro- I can provide for my family, but I don't know what to provide for intelligibility. Yeah, is there means. something? Is there something ultimately static that provides for actual continuity as to the illusion of continuity, which well, is just said in your the world, word Alex? Provides is is weirding me out there, and you just said. So you're you're nitpicking, Alex. Like you're nitpicking, well, and not, you're being I'm, in a very sophisticated way. You're being uh-huh, in, in okay. a sophisticated way evasive. Now, is there ultimately, so in your view, I don't know what you since you right, since you deny the existence of God, right? In order for mm-hmm. you to affirm or deny anything, mm-hmm. you're going you're going to have to presuppose that you have reason. And in order for there to be to be reason, you're going to have to have a world where th- there is is some continuity. What I want to know is what is it that will be the basis of any continuity? Do you have anything in mind for that? Yeah, I just I mean I I have a PhD in philosophy. I've studied a lot of philosophy. I just I don't know what you mean, right? And that might be my fault, right? But it also might be that you're not you know those words are not clear. You think you? I think I'm being abundant. You see, you want to know okay, something? You Alex? think you're being? I mean, clear. I, I like you, Alex. Don't get me wrong. I'm giving you a hard time, but you should mm-hmm. be able to handle these questions instead of just being so evasive. Given that you have a PhD in philosophy and I don't. Sure. What okay, I want to well, know is, you <laughs> deny, you deny what is ultimate is a personal, absolute God who gives rise to dependent states known as creation. So you, you, for you, you have this, this world around you of just uh, particulars. What I want to want to know is, is there anything that is ultimately static I, no, and absolute no, no. that I gives don't rise think to these? A world just particulars. I don't think there's just a world of particulars around. Me. No, I want to know, is there anything that is ultimate and non-dependent that provides for dependent states, Alex? Yeah, so well, it's not and God. What ultimate would that and be? non-dependent. I can tell you what I do think. Right, I think there are abstract objects. I think there are laws. Yeah, of you're being evasive again. You're being real cute. Well, you're being evasive. I, since okay. you reject that God is that which is ultimate and unconditionally non-dependent and is the origin point of all dependent states, what I want to know from you is what do you conceive of in your world? What is it that would be ultimate? That, that it's going to provide for any dependent states, including your concepts of causality, uniformity of nature, and classes of things. Do you, do you have in your world, okay, the way you view the world, is there anything that is ultimate that provides for dependent states? Well, I think there are necessary truths. I think there are abstract objects that exist necessarily. Is that something that's ultimate? N- no. Would an abstract object stand in causal relations, Alex? Abstract objects don't stand in causal relations, no. Okay, so what I'm asking you, what is it in your view that is ultimate, the reason why anything at all exists that provides for any uh, dependent states in your world? What is it? But I don't know what the reason that everything exists is. I don't know what 
if if they're even the okay. So so Sorry. basically then so then basically then you're claiming that when you speak forth propositions and putative facts referring to particulars, it all comes from a chance system. It just is. No, I'm not saying it comes from a chance system. There might be something that's ultimate, but I don't know if there is. Well, then if you don't know, then it should, then what you're just appealing to, just, it just stuff just happens. I don't know if it just happens or whether there's some ultimate ground that makes it happen. Well, wh which, 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 which is it? Because I don't know. If you just, well, if you don't know, then then you're you, then you're just simply re relying. Just stuff happens. I'm not. If I said I knew and it was just there was no ultimate ground and stuff just happens, that would be me. Right. So, so in other that. words, you have no I foundation. Don't know which of those two it is. So you then so therefore you don't have a basis, an ultimate yeah. basis for any for, for any dependencies that you assert. I mean, I don't. Perhaps if that's if that. If those, if that's what those do you know, words mean, you, to you know, you, then I guess you, so. Yeah, and you know what you I said. So. What, what you have just communicated, and everyone in the room heard it. You said you don't know what is what is ultimate, right? I don't. So what that, what what I that said means, was I don't know why everything exists, right? I mean, that's a big fucking. That's mystery. right. You don't, don't know, know what is ultimate. Right. Yeah, I think there's mystery that I, things I don't know. Right. Like, so in so other words, what? so what you're what you're saying, what you're saying is you have dependent facts, but they don't depend upon anything identifiable. No, I, you're telling me that I'm picking the, the, the idea. Do your that dependent are facts, facts. Do, I mean, do, your, do your dependent facts that you invoke, like apple and tree and reason. Right. Do are do these do dependencies, do they derive from something ultimately, Alex? Or do these so-called dependent facts, they just exist because of I don't know? They obviously don't exist because of I don't know. That doesn't even make any sense, that phrase. Well, then, 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 then why, are, why are there recurring consistencies, Alex? Because you're, the, you're very in, invoking things. You're going to be invoking classes that you apply to particulars, okay? Now... Are, are, the, are these particulars that you use are exemplars of ca uh, classes? Is that because there's something ultimately static? Or is this just all in a chance system? Which is it? No, I think there are abstract objects. I said that's... Uh, yeah, see, here we go again with the abstract object. I didn't ask you about abstract objects. I'm talking to you about what is it that ultimately provides for your invoking of dependent facts? What is it? Because they don't explain themselves. Yeah, I, I, my ultimately, what was what did you say? Appealing to dependent facts. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. You invoke a series of recurring depend uh, uh, statements of dependency. Now, I want to know what the framework is that they have intelligibility in. But your answer is you don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part of the problem so you, here. Is that like I think if we could just have this conversation without it, you, you have an insistence that the jargon is yours. Right, and that makes it very difficult for me to engage with it. I mean, I could be a dick and talk about, like, you know, stuff, jargon-filled sentences, and, you know, I'm maybe everyone being, would think I was being I'm really clever. I'm not using like, esoteric jargon, Alex. You're using words in your own way, and I'm finding it very difficult to follow. But what word, what word am I using that you're having trouble with? I'm not, I'm not t talking in doublespeak and d using philosophy well, or nomenclature. Are, frankly. Like, well, well give me are. an example. I ask you, you what do you what, about... what is it that ultimately exists that will provide for dependent states? A dependent state is any fact that is derivative. That's what not jargon spewing, for? Alex. What does provide for mean in that context? It means the reason the reason why it exists. If the, if it doesn't so it exist again, in and of itself, I, say it again then without provide for, so I can yeah, track it. Yeah. When it comes to dependent facts, what is the what is the reason contextually why dependent facts exist, Alex? Okay, so I, I mean, a reason, I think, I think there are reasons why specific content, can dependent facts exist. Like I said before, you know, why is there a rug on the floor? That type of thing. But you don't like that answer. So what type of answer right, hold, hold on one second. Hear? My headset went out. Hold on. All right, I got my headset up. I'm running. I want to know is that when you speak forth facts, those facts mm -hmm. will either be dependent or not dependent. I want to know what the final frame of reference or context is when you speak for dependent facts. Since you don't accept that God, God is that framework, yeah, I want to know what is. 
So final ultimate context, that, that's a phrase I don't understand. And you've lost I've just me. described it in different words. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah, nomenclature so, th throwing, Alex. Perhaps yeah, if you give him, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson's answer to it, that may illuminate the meaning to him. What do you mean, parakeet? Um, didn't he say, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson when someone asked him a similar question. He said the foundation of reality or something like that is forces. Do you recall that? Something along those Oh, lines? yeah. Somebody somebody asked, it, what, what is it at, at, at a foundational level, level why anything exists? And Neil deGrasse Tyson said forces, by which I, he probably meant uh, the fluctuating of quantum energy. What I want to know from you is, what is it that ultimately exists that's going to provide the, the final context for any fact, a fact that is derivational or dependent? Okay, you're going to give me two minutes. I'll be right back. You see, folks, it doesn't matter if you don't have a high school diploma or even if you have a PhD in philosophy like Alex does here, the atheists are still evasive. And he accuses me of nomenclature dropping. I mean, really? <laughs> you laugh, and yet your entire worldview is circular. Yeah, well, if you want to take me on, you can wait till I get done with Alex. Okay? Okay. Anybody have remarks or questions until Alex gets back? Yeah, so I, I am... Oh, he's I mean, back. I'm back for a few minutes, yeah. So I think, you know, I think I, your question is just something like... Um, well... I think you want, you want me to explain something like an ontological ground floor. Like what's the, this is my rephrasing, see if it fits, right? Like what's the most foundational level of reality, right? And because I think that when you're talking about um, dependent, non-dependent facts, I think I understand what you mean in terms of like things existing being dependent on other things existing, right? Like I think the, um, I think the physical properties of the apple um, depend on the causal environment in which they operate. So I think that the causal environment uh, is a sort of prerequisite for the apple existing. Okay. So, I can so do you, that so type do you, of you believe matter, energy, energy, causality, and laws of nature are what is ultimately static that's going to provide for the intelligibility of dependent facts? Is that it? I think that... I don't think that the cliché idea of matter and energy and you know, space-time, I think that's, um, not, that's not right. I think that's just a kind of cartoon version of physics, right? So I don't believe in that. I Alex, don't have that what is your, what's your thing. ultimate frame of reference of why there are facts at all, Alex? Yeah, Since so it's not God, what reference. is it, Alex? I just Alex? don't think I have an ultimate. I think that you're asking me a question. The difficulty is that like, I just don't think I, I have that outlook. Then you don't have intelligibility for facts, Alex, because well, when I per, when okay. I pursue it, when you give me when you speak forth dependent facts and I say, well, what makes that a facts? And you give me a, a proximate contextual explanation at a certain point, you're going to you're going to you're going to stop and you're going to say, well, I don't know. So your facts have yeah, no ultimate basis in them. Well, just having, a, you know, not knowing everything doesn't mean that's I don't care. You know, yes, I don't know everything. I don't see how you have scored a significant okay, point. Okay, but do you? Yeah, well, then the point is, do you even know one fact? Because in order to know a fact, you're gonna you're gonna have to have its context. A fact without context is no fact at all. Can you have a fact without yeah. context, Alex? Yeah, I think I have context, but not ultimate context. No, then you don't have context at all because all you're yeah, simply no, doing I, is you're explaining one dependent fact that. by another dependent fact. Well, I, but I, that second or third or fourth you have, to have an ultimate. Why? Context. Why? why because well, then, then, then you're then you're just going to finally stop at a brute fact, and it, it just it just is. Well, the level of uh, depend like where like, so like, let's not switch between ontology and and epistemology. Is, is your Alex? Is your final stopping out, point? Is, is your final stopping point? Let me something is static. Yeah, let but you're speak. filibustering, on, Alex. Well. I can just go, you know, we don't have to do this. I don't think it's very productive anyway, is it? No, you're filibustering. Okay, I'm filibustering. Am I? Well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be as helpful as I can. You know, we don't have to do this. I, no, no, I don't, I, don't think, I, no, I don't think that you're ill-intentioned. I don't think that of you at all. 
But when I smell okay, filibustering, so, I'm going to call it out. Sure, that's fine. Okay, but you're actually you are actually over talking me. You know, that's easily yeah, because you're filibustering. In terms of debate. Okay, well, I Alex, think I am. <laughs> what is the ultimate frame of reference or context that's going to provide meaning and intelligibility to any facts that you tell me? Do you have anything, Alex? Yeah, that that just sounds honestly that just sounds unintelligible to me. That question. Are you you're, you got to get you closer to your mic. Yeah, the question honestly sounds unintelligible to me. You're asking me what the flibberdib is. Honestly, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I don't know what you mean. I enjoy talking with you. I enjoy the... the oh, I like talking to with fro, you too. Right? But I'm not, I'm not going to bullshit you. If I knew what you meant, I would try and answer it. I'm not going to pull a weak, lame-ass move of just pretending I don't understand because I'm like getting... I don't, well, I don't, I don't, whatever, I, right? I, I don't, I just don't, I don't know think what you mean. that. Yeah, okay. I, so I don't know what I, I want to know, I want to know, does the meaning and intelligibility of facts come from some ultimate static fact or that you, you, it's the intelligibility of facts comes from a stopping point where other facts just exist without, without right, Hold on, hold on. I'll be back in two minutes, two minutes. All right. See, it makes no difference whether you have a PhD in philosophy or, or not. When you ask people to explain their world without God, it's the same thing, whether they have a PhD in philosophy or not. Yeah, typical atheist. Yeah, but to be fair to Alex, Alex is not your typical atheist, okay? Because because he has the uh, academic background, he, he he's not sleazy and deceitful like like most atheists are now do i think he was filibustering a bit yeah i do but at least he's more straightforward than your usual atheist so i i wouldn't call alex your t a typical atheist i think you're being well, uh, that's just my opinion see he and other atheists they just don't have a frame of reference for facts and then when you confront them about that they they, they want to scurry down some semi-related rabbit trail now, earlier, he tried a transcendental line of reasoning, but the point is, the question is simply this. Of course, we both presuppose that we have intelligibility, but whose worldview provides for that? Notice how he tried, wanted to evade the whole worldview question. And you'll notice he subtly tried to change the conversation because he you know, is sophisticated. He's, he has a PhD in philosophy. But when you stay focused in a biblically transcendental way. No, it, that's not a straw the, man. That's Philip, what he said, dude. Oh, I, I, I've said that. Not, not only I said that to Alex directly while he was here, I've said it to him on other occasions as well. Just so you know, Tartartus, this is about the 10th or 11th time Alex and I have debated. Okay. I'm, I am at a major disadvantage when it comes to Alex Malpass. I don't have a PhD in philosophy. He does. See, they have no answers. Even a PhD in philosophy, he can't explain why his facts are intelligible. And then when I tried to ask him about the intelligibility of an apple, that particular on the counter, uh, possessing the class, now then he wants to talk about uh, abstract objects. See how he was subtly changing the subject? We're talking about concrete objects, how and why they possess classness. And he tries to change the issue to there being classes in terms of abstract objects. And by the way, for those of you in real Linda, abstract objects would be things like numbers. Alex's position is no absolute personal creator God exists. Notice he tried to shy away from answering that. Well, how are you going to show that the ultimacy of reality, whatever is ultimate that provides for all dependent facts, is an impersonal absolute? How do you identify what that is in order to show that there's no God? Did Alex address that? No. Can any atheist address that? No. Okay, so Malpass just messaged me. That is it. He's uh he's not coming back right now. That that that's it.
So that just goes to show you people who've said that I only pick on noobs and uneducated white belt. Alex has a PhD in philosophy. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, uh, Parakeet. You wrote it uh, 1252. I let him slip off explaining rationally why God, God does not exist. That's, be, that's because Alex is much more sophisticated at filibustering. So Alex's position, he couldn't explain why there's no God, right? He's, his, his, his basic rationale, although I, he didn't ag actually say this, I'm going to summarize it, is there's no God because whatever is ultimate, I don't know what that is. But he knows it's not God. How's that for reason, folks? Don't get me wrong. I didn't want to seem like I'm being too hard on Alex Malpass. I like Alex. But you know what? I'm not going to give it, no pun intended, I'm not going to give him a pass. Even, Maybe. listen, even, Al, even Alex Malpass was tepid, okay? All he wanted to do was to say, oh, I don't believe in God. He did not want to argue for the non-existence of God, okay? Guy's got a PhD in philosophy, and the best that he could do is, well, I, you think there are other gods that are made up, and I think all gods are made up. That's the best that this guy could do. If atheists felt that they had a, a rational basis that there is no God, they'd step up to the plate and defend it. Not even Alex Malpass would do that. So they just simply want to hide behind, oh, I don't have a belief in God. I think they're made up. But you'll notice how when I was talking with Alex Malpass, I, I explained to him, listen, your position is not just non-belief in God. Your position is the falsity of God. So how do you account for the falsity of God? And he wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Even with a PhD in philosophy, all he wanted to say is, well, I just believe that, you know, gods are made up. That's the, that's the best that a PhD could do. If that's the best that a PhD in philosophy can do, what hope is it for the, the run-of-the-mill atheists? But that was a good object lesson, listening to me and Alex, how, you know, he kept on saying, well, I don't know what you mean, you know? And then, then he, then he, then he accuses me of nomenclature dropping. <laughs> Gotta go.